Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in-depth into my week number two quarterback start-or-sit decisions for every single matchup of the 2023 fantasy football season. We're going to be going in-depth into every single matchup from game number one on Thursday Night Football all the way up until the doubleheader on Monday Night Football, and I'll be telling you guys whether I think you should be playing or sitting the quarterback in all of those games, but before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below while you're down there. Whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on Twitter or X. Please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you would like access to my week number two rankings, as well as asking me any questions I always answer on there, make sure you guys check out the Patreon for $7.50 linked in the video description and in the pinned comment. So without further ado, let's get into my week number two quarterback start or sit decisions. We begin with Thursday Night Football, the Minnesota Vikings at the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, we've talked about this through all of these start-sit videos. This is a matchup last year in prime time where Kirk Cousins absolutely crumbled. He fell over like a Jenga tower, and it was a complete and utter disaster for the Minnesota Vikings team. We know that in prime time, Kirk Cousins is not clutch at all. Kirk Cousins is absolutely terrible, notoriously, in primetime. So even though Kirk Cousins just had a bad game up against the Bucks, and in most scenarios, he would probably bounce back and have a pretty solid game up against the Philadelphia Eagles defense. I understand Nick Mac Jones carved up the Eagles defense in the second half like they were the Thanksgiving turkey, but ultimately... At the end of the day, this is Kirk Cousins in prime time. I don't know how many times he has to bend your fantasy football team over in prime time until you realize that you probably just shouldn't play him. So Kirk Cousins is a sit. I know Jalen Hurts didn't have the most prolific day at the quarterback position last week up against the New England Patriots. The Patriots defense is miles better than the Minnesota Vikings. So I expect Jalen Hurts to have a pretty solid go at things on Thursday night football. Next up, we move to the Sunday slate beginning with the Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. Now the Falcons MO in 2023 is very much like it in 2022. They are just going to run the ball a million times. You draft Kyle Pitts, you draft Grizzly Drake London with these super high NFL draft picks, and who cares? I'm Arthur Smith. Let's just run the ball a million times. No need to throw it to this generational potential tight end or to this great wide receiver, Drake London. Let's just run the ball a million times. Now, maybe Desmond Ritter is just a bottom-of-the-barrel quarterback, which I already think he is, but maybe he's even worse than we all think, right? Maybe we are dodging a bullet letting them run the ball so many times. But at the end of the day, Desmond Ritter is a clear sit. They're obviously just going to try to run the ball a bunch up against the Packers. And the Packers defense would probably destroy Desmond Ritter anyways if you wanted to start him. Jordan, love me tender, love me sweet of the Green Bay Packers looked surgical up against the Chicago Bears on Sunday. Now, the Falcons defense, in my opinion, is definitely better than the Bears defense. The Bears defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. So I think Jordan Love isn't going to be as good as he was last week because he was was a top five quarterback in fantasy football, but does he have top 12 upside in my opinion? Certainly just got to hope that Mr. A.A. Ron Jones is good to go in this game because Aaron Jones was a big help for Jordan Love. I would still start him if Aaron Jones isn't able to play, but I do think that having that safety net, you know, that nice check down piece, not on the offense would hurt Love. He's already not like a must start quarterback. But like if you lost Aaron Rodgers or maybe your quarterback situation's a little bit dicey, I think Jordan Love is a fine start. And I hope that Christian Watson is good to go because I think that would help out Jordan Love a ton even more. Next up, we got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Buffalo Bills. Now, Josh Allen in prime time on Monday Night Football looked atrocious. He looked like Helen Keller out there trying to read a defense. Josh Allen was downright putrid. Now I know that he does those special things where he has the cannon attached to his right arm and he does all those crazy things where he runs and he can make the defense miss. He can run the defense over because he's so big. He can hurdle guys over. But at some point, Josh Allen needs to realize that, hey, maybe against the Aaron Rodgerless Jets, 
in a game where you don't have to make any crazy throws. This isn't against the Chiefs in the playoffs. You don't need to fucking run and nosedive into two defenders, right? You can just stand in the pocket, try to throw the ball, dump the ball off. You don't need to throw these deep missiles that end up as interceptions, Josh. Why are you doing that? I get that the Jets' defense is tough, but that offense was moving the rock at a snail's pace once Zach Wilson was under center. So why are you doing all this? He's doing all this extra for no reason. Now he sucked in week one, but now he gets the Raiders' defense. I know Russell Wilson didn't look supreme up against the Raiders' defense, but Josh Allen is way better than Russell Wilson. Again, some people would be scared because Josh Allen shit the bed for them in prime time, and I get it. It sucks. But when push comes to shove, try to throw that away. Throw that out of your mind. Week two up against the Raiders defense, I think Josh Allen could be the QB number one. Jimmy Garoppolo actually looked really good up against the Denver Broncos. Sadly, it appears he's losing his number one target in Jacoby Myers this week because the guy was just force-feeding the rock to Jacoby Myers. Again, while Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than a majority of people give him credit for, a lot of people entering into the season told me that Jimmy Garoppolo was as useless as using a Snickers bar wrapper as a condom. But he looks better than that. He obviously looks good. He's a good-looking individual. But Jimmy Garoppolo, again, he's going to play better in this game than people think but he's not really a start-worthy fantasy quarterback. Next up, we move to the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the Ravens blow out the Houston Texans, right? They blow them out of the water, but it didn't really feel like they did, right? When you're watching the game and you're looking at the fantasy scores, Lamar didn't really do anything. Zay Flowers looked good. The running backs looked good, but then J.K. Dobbins is now out for the season. It didn't look great for the Ravens. Again, they won. A win's a win. But for fantasy, I expected Lamar to go out there, dice the defense up in the first half. Maybe he's sitting on the bench on ice in the fourth quarter or whatever. But I thought he would put up enough points to be amazing, and he just wasn't. The Cincinnati Bengals, though, they look bad, and they didn't even score any points, right? They could barely move the ball. Joe Burrow looked downright atrocious. <laughs> Higgins didn't have a single fantasy football point. This offense was put in a box. Now, if you know a bit of history about Joe Shiesty in week number one, things typically haven't really gone his way. And up against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland, Joe Burrow is downright terrible. His record is really, really bad. This week is a get-right game for Joe Burrow as well as Lamar Jackson. I get both of these guys bent you over a table in week number one. But try to have a short memory of week one in fantasy football, right? Throw it behind you. You drafted Lamar and Joe Burrow very highly in fantasy football drafts for a reason. These are some of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. I know week one did not go their way, but there is no way in hell I am sitting Lamar Jackson or Joe Shiesty. Next up, we got the Seattle Seahawks at the Detroit Lions. Now, the Seattle Seahawks had what might have been one of the worst performances on Sunday, in my opinion. I know on Sunday night, the Giants put up a grand total of zero points. I know there was some bad offensive play on Sunday, but man, oh man, the Seahawks, who were a playoff team, who were competitive in the playoffs, who got Jackson Smith in the Jigba, Tyler Lockett in my pocket skirt, they got Geno, they got Metcalf, they got Kenneth Walker, they got Zach Charbonnet, right? They have all these pieces. And to go out there up against the decimated LA Rams defense, up against Matthew Stafford without Cooper fucking Cup, and to lay an egg like that was downright disgraceful. It was disgraceful. Geno has one of the best wide receiver cores to his disposal. Again, Metcalf, Lockett, and JSN. Well, I have my qualms with Metcalf in fantasy because I think he is not going to be very consistent. At the end of the day, that is still a great wide receiver core. I get Nick JSN is coming into the week banged up. He had surgery. This is the other thing. I get it. I get it. But to lay an egg like that, to get bent over table, to get smacked all game long by Matthew Stafford without Cooper Cup for the defense, to get fucked like that was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. So I expect the Seattle Seahawks and Geno Smith to step up big time here, right? I don't think the Seahawks are some fraudulent team. I think Pete Carroll needs to start chewing some more gum. 
on the sideline and figure things out here. Gino, bounce back performance. Don't love him against the Lions defense because the Lions defense did look good up against the Chiefs, but I do think Gino still has a decent day. Definitely, if we were ranking these two guys, though, I would prefer Jared Goff. Jared Goff looked pretty good up against the Chiefs. I get that he does not have really a clear number two receiver. It would be Josh Reynolds. Marvin Jones has hands of butterfingers, right? I made this joke a couple videos ago. But you know when people do that thing where they call it Edward 40 hands and you have two 40s on each of your hands duct taped to them? That's what Marvin Jones looked like he had playing football. He fucking fumbles the ball, can't get a hold of the ball. The guy's halfway into a retirement home, right? It was a disaster. But even with that, Josh Reynolds looked good. Josh Reynolds' his buddy from the LA Rams. Amon Ross St. Brown was Amon raw dogging the Chiefs defense. So up against Seattle, Jared Goff's going to get it wet a little bit here and have a pretty solid performance. Moving now to the next game here, the LA Chargers at the Atlanta Titans, the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. Now, despite the fact that the Chargers did lose to my Miami Dolphins, Justin Herbert had a pretty decent game. I believe that the Dolphins' defense was bad in week number one, right? Vic Fangio didn't really fix everything, which could be expected, right? Because it's just week one. When you change a defense so drastically like that, it takes some time to adjust to. Now, I've seen some people in the comment section and over the internet giving the Gawk Gawk 9000 to the Titans defense saying, oh, the Titans defense looked good against the Saints. They were the reason why the team was in the game. Do I think the Titans defense is like absolute dog shit? No. But at the end of the day, Justin Herbert should be able to carve them up. This should not be a very hard matchup for Justin Herbert. He has Quentin Johnston. He has Palmer. He has Keenan Allen. He has Mike Williams. I know Mike Williams disappointed in week one as well, but these are some of the best receiving core in the NFL. He should have Austin Eckler. I would personally be shocked if Eckler was not good to go on Sunday. I made this joke in the running back video. Even if Eckler's hobbling on there with one leg and he's using his third leg as his second leg, he's going to be just fine. Even on reduced workload, Justin Herbert is going to be fine with Austin Eckler. So Justin Herbert is just a very safe piece, game in and game out. I know that the media slobbers on this guy schlong like he's going to go out there and throw the ball deep every play like Patrick Mahomes or something. He doesn't do that. He loves checking the rock down. But Justin Herbert looked good against the Dolphins. I think he's going to look good here up against the Le Titans. Ryan Tannehill was so bad. He was so bad. That it was shocking to me. I was like, you know what? Against the Saints, Tannehill might be able to be sneaky good. You know, Tannehill gets a lot of shit. A lot of people like to kind of throw mud, drag him through the mud. Now, Tannehill, he had a down last year. But if you remember the last couple years in Tennessee, he was actually pretty good. Now, I wasn't saying in the offseason, I think this guy's going to be a top 12 quarterback. But, you know, in a super flex league, like, I wouldn't have hated to have Ryan Tannehill as my third quarterback, or maybe in a deeper league, my second quarterback, you know, there are a lot worse options, right? There were teams that were playing Desmond Ritter, right? But man, oh man, in week number one, Ryan Tannehill was very bad. There was a play where Chig is wide open and Tannehill is just not seeing it. Bro was seeing ghosts like Sam Darnold in that primetime game against the Patriots, and it was bad. Now, do I expect Tannehill to always look like that? No, but I think if Tannehill has three, four more games like this, he's getting benched for fucking Mayo boy Will Levis, right? So Tannehill needs to pick things up. The Chargers defense, a lot of people are saying, oh, the Chargers defense this, the Chargers defense that. The Chargers defense didn't look great, but there's a big difference between the Titans offense and the Dolphins offense. Moving now to game number seven here. We got the Chicago, Chicago Bears at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, Baker Mayfield told one of the Minnesota Vikings defenders that he needs to get his weight up. Baker Mayfield dropped his cock into the mouth of the Vikings defense. And honestly, as a Baker Mayfield truther, as a Baker Mayfield guy, it was awesome to see. I love me some Baker Mayfield. I can't quit it, but I get it. In fantasy football, I'm not starting him. I know the Bears' defense is putrid. I know that Bears' defense looked atrocious on Sunday. One of the worst defenses in the National Football League. But even then, 
with Baker under center. You know Baker's in for some bullshit, right? In week one, he kind of avoided it, right? He didn't make too many boneheaded decisions. But now, Baker Mayfield's confidence is at an all-time high. And I think that Baker is going to make some real dumb decisions on Sunday. Now, I still think Godwin, Rashad White, as well as Evans could have some good game or have a good game. But Baker Mayfield might just be a little too cocky right now. Might be riding a little too high and throw some dumb picks in this game. If you're in a super deep league and, you know, Baker's your QB too, good to have him on the bench. I think he might actually be able to roll out this whole season with the QB one job. And I actually think he could have a good game here. I really do. Because there are some tough matchups, and I'm not going to have him ranked as, like, the quarterback 32 or something, but, man, oh, man, it really does not feel great to throw Baker Mayfield into your lineup. So he's a sit. Justin Fields looked bad against the Packers, but there's levels to things, right? There's the Packers defense, which is pretty solid. Then there's the Bucks defense. I know they had um, Kirk Cousins in, like, a torture chamber in that game, but they're not the same as the Packers. Fields... Hasn't really been the greatest against the Packers in his career thus far. Now he gets the Bucks. This is a get-right game for Justin Fields. I'm not quitting on Justin Fields yet. I really love his rushing upside. I love DJ Moore there. Let's just hope he can get DJ Moore the ball some more. And I think this is a big bounce back for Fields. I think he could easily be a top three quarterback or the QB1 in this spot. Next up, we got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Chiefs lose a game that they probably shouldn't have lost up against the Lions. The Jaguars have a strong half. They look incredible, impeccable, unstoppable in the first half against the Colts. And then the second half, things start to go wrong, but they still eke out a win, right? They still win. So congrats to Lawrence. Great game. Week one. Play okay, right? You win. A win's a win, in my opinion, in the NFL. You got to take everything given to you. The Chiefs looked bad, right? Not saying that Mahomes himself looked bad, the receivers were bad. I'm not trying to glaze Mahomes like these fucking announcers in the game who basically just unzip this guy's pants and suck him off all night long. I'm not going to do that here, but I think there's better days ahead for Mahomes. Will Kelsey play? Will he not play? Will definitely have some effect on Mahomes because that was clear in week one. In terms of Mahomes having that real generational performance or just like one of the top two quarterback games on the week... I think he definitely will need Kelsey, especially if Kadarius Tony goes out there and plays like he did on Thursday Night Football in Week 1. At the end of the day, though, you're not sitting Patrick Mahomes. You're not going to do some type of galaxy brain like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so worried about the receivers. Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Rashi Rice, all these other guys, they're, they're really not that good. I think I got to sit Mahomes. Don't overthink shit in fantasy football. It's very easy to take Week 1 and think it's the prophecy and think Mahomes is just falling off the edge of a cliff or something, right? Don't do that. Especially for newer fantasy players. They tend to panic way more. The seasoned veterans who have been destroyed in week one realize that it's really not that crazy of a deal to lose in week one. You know, they're a little bit more level-headed. But if you're a newer player, it's easy to panic. It's easy to be like, oh my gosh, I spent a couple weeks in August or maybe a couple months in the summer researching this shit and my team plummeted off the edge of the earth. Kersplat, right? Like... In the Looney Tunes, that's a sound that they'd make, you know, like when you go to run into like a fake cave and it's not actually a cave, it's like someone painted it on there and they run right into it, right? Kersplat, that's what sometimes people feel like who are newer to fantasy. They try to panic. They try to overthink things. Don't overthink. Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence up against the Chiefs defense. The Chiefs defense looked exploitable. Now they do end up getting back Chris Jones, one of their better players. So that will have an impact on the game. I don't necessarily see T-Law being like the best quarterback on the week. I won't project him to be that, but I do think it's possible considering how good they looked in week one. I think they are going to build on that. Again, that first half, dominant 50 Shades of Grey style. The second half, pretty just am. Before we get on into the next couple of games here, before we skedaddle our way out of here, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play Pick'em for the NFL in the universe. And they have a great offer for you guys on Thursday night, the Eagles versus the Minnesota Vikings. You got to go ahead and 
and pick Jalen Hurts higher than half of a total yard. All he has to do is get one total yard, and you match that with one other pick. For instance, you can go with Justin Jefferson higher than seven receptions. If both of those hit, you can go ahead and get three times your entry on that. If you want to add in a third pick, you'd get six times. A fourth pick, you're 10 times. And a fifth pick, you would get 20 times your entry fee. If you want to check out Underdog Fantasy, make sure you check out the link in the video description for a first match deposit bonus of up to $100. And you have to be in one of the states that are on your screen right now. If you use that link or type in promo code Notorious, you get a first match deposit bonus up to $100. If you deposit $100, they give an additional $100. If you do $50, additional $50, $25, additional $25. The minimum deposit on Underdog is $10. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Next up, we move to the Indianapolis Colts at the Houston Texans. So Anthony Richardson plays pretty good in week number one. I was someone that was a little bit more cautious with Richardson because I thought the matchup, not like soft serve ice cream against the Jags, not super hard either, but like kind of in the middle. I was like, ah, it's week one of a rookie's season. Anthony Richardson already has like some flaws in his game. So like, let's be cautious. You can start him but I'd probably not want to do that. And then he just proved me wrong blatantly because he looked like what I thought he was going to look like at some point this season. Now, he did suffer an injury deep into that game, which does hurt his potential playing in this game, right? I project that he's going to play. He says he's good to go, but it's never promising when a guy gets hurt during the game, right? And then Gardner Minshew has to go out there and play for a little bit. They get the Texans defense. The Texans defense, I think, is going to get a little bit better. I think that their head coach being from the 49ers, a great defensive team. He was the defensive coordinator. This is all great news for the Texans in the future. But in this week, Anthony Richardson is going to, as long as he plays, run the ball a bunch, throw the ball to Michael Pittman seven gazillion times, and as long as Deion Jackson doesn't fumble five gazillion times, Anthony Richardson's probably going to have a very fine performance here. I think he has really good upside. CJ Stroud didn't look terrible, I thought, in week one. But again, he didn't really show too many flashes. There's not a lot you can do when you're the Texans going up against the Ravens in week one, right? You're kind of getting thrown to the wolves in a way for CJ Stroud. So again, not the best game. Better games ahead, in my opinion, for the rookie CJ Stroud. A rookie battle in week number two. Next up, we got the San Francisco 49ers at the Los Angeles Rams. Now, Matthew Stafford did turn heads for me. I know there were some Matthew Stafford truthers in the comment section all offseason that loved Matthew Stafford, but I was very honest with those people. I told them that Matthew Stafford's neck, his back, all that being kind of swept under the rug. No one's really talking about it, but it really looked like it impacted him last year. And he missed multiple games because of it, right? So I was like, you know what? Stafford's getting older. He's no spry young chicken no more. I'm a little scared. Now, I wasn't saying Matthew Stafford's a fucking bum pick. Like, if you draft Matthew Stafford, you're an idiot. But what I was saying was that, hey, maybe we need to not be fully confident in Stafford, right? Like some people were. Now, Stafford shocked me. I was in awe. Week one without Cooper Cup. This defense slinging, or the offense slinging the rock very well. The defense looks strong against Seattle. Wow. That's awesome. Great job by Stafford. Great job by Puka. Great job by Tutu Atwell. Tyler Higby, right? And then the running back tandem of Williams and Cam Akers. It was cool. It really was. But now we go up against the Niners. Now, I'm not saying that Matthew Stafford's Kenny Pickett because Kenny Pickett looked like he had no idea what he was doing out there. But do I expect Matthew Stafford to have this prolific week two Kind of like he played in week one. And he didn't even end up with a lot of fantasy points because they rushed in so many touchdowns, but he really did look good in week one. I think Stafford could be a decent fantasy piece as we get further into the season. Yeah, actually, I do. But up against the Niners defense, that is rock solid, rock hard, like your cock after a gas station pill. I just don't trust Stafford against the Niners. Big cock Brock Purdy of the 49ers looked real good against the Steelers, which... I thought could happen, but I thought the Steelers' defense would play a little bit better. They kind of just got a train ran on them by Brock Purdy and Brandon Ayuk. Purdy's got Ayuk, Debo, Kittle, McCaffrey, all these great guys to throw the rock to. Jawan Jennings as well, if you want to mention him, the speedster. But Brock Purdy looked good. Again, the Rams' defense looked good against Seattle, but I think Seattle was kind of just not... Seattle didn't really beat themselves, 
But that just didn't look good out of Seattle, right? Now, maybe I was wrong about the Rams' defense, and they're going to go out there and lock Brock Purdy behind a box, right? Behind the cage, right? But I don't really think that's what's going to happen here. I think Purdy's going to go out there, have a pretty solid game. Yet again, I'm not going to rank him inside the top 12, but he is a pretty reliable quarterback at this point. He's proven to us from last year and this season so far. Again, not a huge sample size, but this guy shouldn't have been Mr. Irrelevant. Next up, we got the Giants at the Arizona Cardinals. Now, everyone knows that the Giants got eviscerated in week 140-0, the type of game that you just want to forget, right? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the men in black thing where they put the thing up to the, the person and it you know, erases their memory. I'm erasing week one. Didn't happen, right? No chance. When you get blown out like that, when it's raining like that, what is Daniel Jones supposed to do? I don't know why they kept playing him. Like It seems like you're just hurting his confidence. The Cardinals defense showed up pretty well up against the Commanders, but that's the Commanders, right? Brian Dable, I think, will get the team right for week number two and lay an ass whooping down onto the Arizona Cardinals defense. I think Daniel Jones is going to look good in this game. Not, not like week one. I think it's going to be a lot different. Now, I know there are a lot of people, again, quick to be like, Nick, I knew Daniel Jones sucked, right? You thought Daniel Jones would be good because he's got a bad receiver core. He's got Darren Waller. He's got Saquon. And Brian Dable really fixed him last year. Nick, you're a fucking idiot, right? That's what they'll think. And that's okay, right? Week one proved me wrong, right? Nick looks dumb week one. But there's a lot more games left. A lot of game left. It's just week one. Don't overreact to week one. Daniel Jones going up against a bad defense, you're going to start him. He's got great rushing upside. I think Darren Waller plays better in week two, knowing that he's more healthy. I think the offense as a whole doesn't look absolutely putrid. You smell that? You could smell the offense through the screen from week one. It was putrid. It was disgusting. It was gross. In week two, I think we see a lot better of an offense here. Uh, Joshua Dobbs, I think he's going to go week two. I don't think they're going to switch to tune. Did he look terrible? No. But uh, you're not starting him for fantasy. Next up, we got the Jets at the Dallas Cowboys. And man, oh man. That was hard to watch. It was beautiful to see them, you know... Even as a Jets hater, as a Dolphins fan who lives in New Jersey, can't stand all the yapping that the Jets fans did all offseason. But you don't want the Jets to fail, at least I didn't, from Rodgers getting hurt. I thought maybe Rodgers would go out there and look old. Maybe Rodgers won't be as good as people thought he was. Uh, the Jets fans that were glazing them all offseason doing tricks on it. You know, I thought maybe that would be the case. But now I don't even get my vindication of Rodgers potentially being bad or the Jets being overrated, because Rodgers gets hurt and it ruins it all. But as even a Jets hater, I was happy to see Zach Wilson win that game. Now, was it because of Zach Wilson that they won? Fuck no, baby. But he played not bottom of the barrel, okay? But uh, now he gets the Cowboys defense. The Bills defense was good. The uh, Cowboys defense is a whole nother level. I'm on a whole new, I'm on a new level. Bought me a new shovel, that type of song, you know? Um, Yeah, Zach Wilson, I'm not starting this guy. Wouldn't be caught dead playing Zach fucking Wilson, the MILF hunter. Sure, if you get points per the amount of moms that this guy bangs after the game, which he was probably swimming in after that uh, win up against the Buffalo Bills in primetime. But man, oh man, it sucks that Rodgers doesn't get to play for the Jets. Really does. Once I saw him run out there with the American flag on 9-11, it was like, you know what? While I thought the Bills were going to win, this feels like destiny. It really did. The way that the crowd, and I mean, it was just an electrifying atmosphere. Like, there's the green going up, the lights, everything, there's smoke. It was beautiful. It really was. It, it was something, it was a sight to behold. And for it to all to come crumbling down that fast. It wasn't like it was like, oh, halfway through the game and happens. No, it was like fucking four snaps into the game. It was terrible. Terrible. Again, I'm not trying to sit here and just have a pity party for Aaron Rodgers. But even as not the biggest Aaron Rodgers fan on the earth, it felt hard to, it sucked. Ruined the vibe of the night, but I'm glad the Jets won. Um, so Zach Wilson, again, you're just not starting him. He's just not good enough against the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe maybe Aaron Rodgers fucking teaches Zach Wilson what to do. Maybe Rodgers will be on the sideline in his ear telling him what to do. Maybe, I don't know, but uh, like what McVay used to do with golf. But uh, Zach Wilson, yeah, you're not starting him. Dak didn't really show anything in week one. 
They blew the Giants out of the water, but we didn't really see anything out of Dak, Lamb, any of these guys. Like, it was just kind of like, hey, we'll run the ball, Tony Pollard. I talked about this in the running back video. They literally handed the ball to Tony Pollard. I swear to God, he went in slow motion. On one of them. They pitched him the ball. He's like, now if you're on the podcast, you don't fucking know what I was doing. But he's just walking in slow motion, just walks right into the end zone. Like, it was just an ass whooping. So Dak, I think, has a pretty okay game here. But again, it's against the Jets defense that just made... Josh Allen turned into a turn, of, turn the ball over machine. So, uh, not really the highest praises of Dak this week. I think he's all right, but uh, not a tw- top, not a top tw- 12 option for me this week. Next up, we got the left hands up. Who are we, the commanders? At the Broncos, Sam Howell didn't look terrible against the Cardinals. Uh, the Broncos defense didn't look terrible against the Raiders either. But let's be honest here, Sam Howell probably not going to show out against the Broncos defense, I, I just think the Broncos defense is too good for me to roll out Howell. Howell, again, he didn't look terrible against the Cardinals, but he also didn't look like I thought he was going to look. Because in the preseason, again, this is why you don't overreact to preseason. We talk about this all the time, but preseason was like, holy shit. Sam Howell's looking surgical. Sam Howell is slicing this defense up like a nice fucking tomato, sun-dried tomato, right? But no. I, that would happen in week one. He didn't look terrible, but again, against the Broncos, I'd rather just sit him. Commanders defense looked okay against the Cardinals. I don't think the Commanders have one of the best defenses in the NFL, but again, Russell Wilson wasn't very impressive against what I think is a bad Raiders defense. So now you got him going up against a better defense, probably without Jerry Judy again. It seems like they want to run the rock a lot with uh, Javante Williams as well as Samaj P. Ryan. So yeah, Russell Wilson, Broncos country, let's ride. Sit both Howell and Russell Wilson. Next up, we got my Dolphins at the New England Deflatriots. Patriots on because you waited all day for Sunday night. Oh man, I hit that shit. Pause. Uh, Tua, you're starting them. I know. Nick, the Patriots defense is way better than the Chargers defense. Obviously. Didn't need some crazy analysis to figure that one out. The Patriots defense came alive in that game, looked pretty good against the Eagles in the second half. But at the end of the day, Tua has the Patriots number, undefeated against the Patriots. Mac Jones looked good against the Eagles defense. I get it, the Eagles defense probably better than the Dolphins defense. But are we really believing that? Are we really confident enough in Mac Jones in prime time when the lights are shining the brightest? Mac Jones hasn't been great on prime time. Now, he's not Kirk Cousins level bad, but not the best. I know Patriots fans are fucking chugging the Kool-Aid from week one, but I'm just not buying it. Look, I, you know what? I hope this is a close game. I hope the Dolphins don't just blow out the Patriots because that would be fun, right? But I don't think Mac Jones is going to play great. Like, the receiver core, even though Kendrick Bourne looked good, I mean, if your fucking number two option is Sean Booty, like, what the hell are you doing? So, Juju Smith-Schuster wasn't playing much. I'm going to, uh, I'm starting him. You know, again, tough matchup. I get it. I get it. This is no soft serve matchup. But I didn't just watch week one to say, hey, let's sit two in week two against the Patriots. Not doing that. And then Mac Jones, definitely going to be sitting him down. Hope he does better, though. Uh, Patriots, game over. Next game here, Saints at the Carolina Panthers. Monday Night Football, part one of two in the doubleheader. Derek Carr against the Panthers. Now, Carr did not look good, in my opinion, against the Falcons, the Titans. Against the Titans in week one, right? Again, Talked about this a bunch. Panthers played the Falcons. That's how I got that messed up. But so for Derek Carr, he doesn't look great. Um, I don't think he's actually that bad of a quarterback. I just think he was playing down to the competition, right? Tannehill, they just can't move the ball. He's trying to do crazy shit. Basically, well, not like Josh Allen, because Josh Allen just kept turning the ball over, and Derek Carr wasn't necessarily doing that. But I did think that, hey, this is not the best we're gonna see out of Carr. I don't think that Carr is like way better than I give him credit for, right? I don't think Carr's like this top 12 quarterback in the NFL anymore, but I also don't think he is as bad as what we saw on Sunday. I kind of hyped up the Panthers defense a little bit against the Falcons, and they could not stop the run worth jack shit. Uh, Jamal Williams didn't look good, though, last week, so I do expect a lot of Derek Carr. Michael Thomas looked good. Olave got banged up, but he came back in the game. He looked good. Rashid Shahid. Uh, Rashid Shahid. I'm Shahid, if anyone knows that video. But, uh, yeah, Derek Carr. Send him in, but uh, now it's like a top 12 option. Bryce Young, there were some flashes in that game. The receiver core there was just so bad. Like, Hayden Hurst was like his best option. 
think Bryce Young's going to get better. I'm not saying this guy's a bust in his career. It's week two. You know, don't need to be starting all these rookie quarterbacks outside of Anthony Richardson. Final game here, Browns versus the Steelers. Pickett was just downright terrible. Atrocious. Just, just as bad as it gets. Now, now the Browns defense isn't as good as the 49ers. 100%. I agree with that. But, uh, prime time without Deontay Johnson. I don't know. I don't know, Jim. Uh, I don't know about this. I, I, I think I just would rather let Pickett, you know, maybe have a good game and he'll just chill on my bench. And again, while we talked about the Browns defense, they did actually come out to play in week one. So it, this is going to be a closer game than we think because it's an AFC North rivalry matchup, right? We all know how these things go, but Pickett's chilling on the bench. And then Watson looked all right against the Bengals. Definitely played better than Joe Burrow. Had one throw that just was not it. Tight, bad throw. Size Daddy looked fine. Didn't look like MVP Watson, but also didn't look like Watson from last year who couldn't hit the broad side of a barn with a pass. So Watson against the Steelers defense, again, not the most ideal matchup. Not even a top 10, 12 guy in my rankings right now. Uh, you can get the rankings on Patreon, link in the video description for $7.50 a month. I answer all the questions on there. But again, I am not trying to say that Watson's going to suck this game because he has some rushing upside. He rushed in one uh, up against the the Bengals. So Sean Watson, he, he's an all right option this week. And I think he's going to keep progressing and getting better. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. Again, if you want to check out the Patreon link in the video description, I love you guys all so much. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen it already. I love you guys all so much. From deep down the bottom of my heart, we saw a lot of views yesterday. I really do appreciate you guys. Tight end starts it. Video later, Thursday, running back rankings as well as a stream before Thursday Night Football. Love you guys from deep down. Have a great one. As always, good boy!